Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to take a new Toyota 2JZ oil pump out of the box, prep it for installation and put it on the engine. Seems like a pretty basic operation. However, there could be some mistakes made or manufacturing issues with the pump that you just wanna look over before you put it on the engine. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the pump in a rod vise. It'll kinda of hold the pump still for me. And I'm gonna take the back plate off the pump. I'm gonna take the rotors out of the pump and make sure that the oil bypass is not sticking. This is a garroter style oil pump. So you have the oil inlet and the oil outlet. And what happens is oil is brought into the pump through this oil inlet, and then it's met into basically the compression part of the pump right here where oil will enter, be pressurized, and then be exhausted out of the pump into the main galley that pressurizes all your bearings and cylinder head and all that stuff. So it's a pretty, basic design uh, it does suffer from high speed feed so if you go to uh, higher engine speeds these pumps do suffer a little bit compared to a gear pump because you can't fill the fill side of the pump fast enough and it'll start to cavitate but before you take the pump apart i would just mark the housing that way you're putting it back together in the same orientation when I started working on the 2JZ engines, I would take the pumps apart and look at them and they were all fairly covered in uh, grease. So the rotors were fairly lubricated. And nowadays, it seems like the pump rotors come fairly dry. So if you take the pump apart and you look in the housing or at the gears, there's not a lot of lubrication, if any, present. It's where you can get, this one may have an example. So there's like a little tiny bit of flash rusting here just rub that off with your finger, but but you don't want to dry start the pump because it could score the housing. So what we're going to do is we're going to lubricate the pump. We're going to make sure that the oil pump bypass is not stuck close because it is also dry. If there's too much pressure present in the discharge side of the pump, there's a piston that opens up and it allows that excessive pressure to go back into the inlet side of the pump so you don't blow the oil filter apart. So the engine's cold, it'll make a lot of oil pressure because all the clearances are tight, the oil's very thick, and you need a bypass so you don't create excessive oil pressure. So again, just like the rotors, if that bypass is dry, it will corrode and stick in that bore and then you'll make too much oil pressure. So we're gonna take the bypass out, we're gonna inspect it, we're gonna make sure that it is clean and clear and lubricated so it slides in that bore and operates properly. This is all the piston is, and as you can see, it's dry also. So this pump hasn't been sitting around very long because there's no corrosion on it. But like I said, Toyota used to have these things really lubricated. And then over time, it seems like they just got uh, cheap with the grease. Now that I've lubricated the piston and it slides freely in the pump, I'm gonna go ahead and install the pressure spring back in there. Uh, in order to do that, I'll kind of cheat a little bit. I'll drop a half inch socket into the socket I use to take it off, which is a 24 millimeter, and that'll give the plug a bit of protrusion out of the socket, because if not, it'll get soaked up in the pump housing and you won't be able to grab the first thread. Keep in mind that this is all pretty sharp, so be careful with your hands as you put it back together. Wow. 
while the pump is apart, we're gonna go ahead and install the front main seal. There's a lip here on the oil pump. And then there is a hole in the pump housing here that drains oil back out. So as oil is being pressurized in the pump, if whatever oil is being leaked out of the pump housing will drain out in back into the oil pan so it doesn't pressurize the front seal and push it out. This is a new OEM front main seal. For those of you that have been around the Jay-Z engine for quite some time, there have been people that have uh, struggled to keep the front main seal in place or struggled to keep the front main seal from leaking. Um, fortunately for me, I've never gone through any of that nonsense. I install the pump seal with a little bit of silicone lubricant on the outside of the seal. I push the pump seal all the way down into the pump and I'm mindful of crankcase pressure. If you are having to use screws or anything like that to keep this seal in place, it's a good illustration that you are either building too much oil pressure behind the seal because the hole has a blockage in it and it isn't allowed to bypass that oil back into the oil pan or you just have excessive crankcase pressure and you need to add breathers to the crankcase and or cam covers. That's it. I just push it in by hand. I've got it bottomed on this edge evenly all the way around. And I am careful to not distort any of the seal housing. I push on the outside of the seal when I install it. This is just a uh, LS1 oil pump gear that I have for degree and cams, but it fits that seal well. And you just push it down in there. If you're using something small, and you beat that seal to where the seal is distorted in its shape, you're creating a problem with, it, with the, the situation and it's going to give you problems. So make sure when you install any seal, whether it be a front main or rear main or a cam seal, that you're evenly pushing on the outside of the seal body and that you're not distorting the actual size or shape of the area that's gonna be creating the seal on the crankshaft or camshaft. So now that we've installed the front main seal, I'm gonna put some assembly lube on the lip of it that's gonna ride on the crankshaft. So it's lubricated during startup. And I'm gonna put some assembly oil in the pump. And this is gonna just lubricate those pump gears during startup. So same thing with some lubricant on the back plate because you don't want any of that aluminum and steel uh, scarring as it goes together during startup because it won't immediately grab a prime. Once you've done that, it's time to install the screws back into the pump housing. I will put a little dab of blue Loctite on the screws because once upon a time, a back plate did come loose. Although it was on Pedro's car, which is a pretty extreme case for a factory oil pump, but vibration does funny things, so we can just um, limit our liability there. Now we've got two new Toyota O-rings. You're gonna use new O-rings on the pump and you're gonna make sure that there's no silicone left in any of these O-ring retention slots. These O-rings go in dry and they just pop in and sit there. If they don't want to pop in and sit there, you've probably got silicone left over in the radius or machined area of that cavity and you need to use a pick and scrape all that clean. So you've got your O-ring sitting there. So we're gonna put some silicone on the back of the pump and then it will be ready to put the pump on the engine. Silicone is gonna go in this cavity here 
and not in these cavities here. These two cavities are for overflow to keep when the silicone spooges out of this cavity to create a seal, it doesn't go into the oil galleys of the engine. So you're not gonna silicone in these sections, just this section here and then back behind each bowl hole. You want to make sure that these two dowels are present. These dowels are going to locate the pump and make sure that the oil pump gear is in, al in alignment with the crankshaft. If you don't have these oil pump dowels and you put the oil pump on, you are going to have an alignment problem and it is going to destroy the pump and along with whatever engine components it takes with it. So if you're a little bit OCD, you can um, mark the outside of the engine block and look at your O-rings and make sure they are present. If you leave the O-ring out, you're gonna have a sizable problem on your hands. So double check that they're in place before you install the pump. When you go to install the pump, you just slide it onto the oil pump gear. It will engage and then you make your way up to the front main seal, gently work it over the front main seal and now the pump is in place. Install your hardware and you are ready to go. So not a very complicated install, but you wanna make sure that the pump is lubricated well and that the oil pump bypass is not sticking. And you are not going to use some disgusting amount of silicone and make a big mess. Uh, I use Fuji Bond. It's relatively uh, easy to work with. It's an OEM uh, Subaru silicone. And it works well for a very long time. I do not recommend um, any sort of do-it-yourself, low-cost silicone because you do not want an oil pump leaking. Um, you cannot take the oil pump off the engine on a 2JZ without taking the upper oil pan off. So if you mess this up, it's uh, take the engine back out of the car time and nobody's gonna be happy at that point. So just be careful, follow the steps, be clean with your work, and uh, it'll work out well. If you get all these things done well and just follow the instructions I've given with the torque specs we've put on the screen, you should have a long and trouble-free life with your oil pump. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time.